it stopped? Nope. There was a bunch of computer parts laying around over there, and the computer is acting really slow. So I'm just going to keep going. Oh, well. They're lost. Um, where were we? Uh, right, let's do a proof by induction. Let's prove a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 plus n. Is, this is the sum of the first n numbers. This is a sort of an ancient and historical problem. It's been proved several ways. Uh, we'll prove it using the technique of induction. This is equal to something. Does anyone know off the top of their head what this is equal to? N times n plus 1 divided by 2. Yeah. n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Right. n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, now, there's a few proofs of this you could do. Uh, Gauss famously, as a child, had, had a proof. He was like four years old or something. It's probably fake. It's a legend. But he, his teacher sent him in the corner, and he said, add up all the first 100 numbers. Right. So he says to him, you know, add up 1 plus 2 plus, plus 100. And Gauss says, OK, well, consider that I add it to itself twice. So we have 100 plus 99 plus dot, dot, dot plus 1, right? But write the sequence in reverse. And if you notice, actually, you can pair up the numbers if you, if you add it to itself twice. You get 101 plus 101 plus dot, 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 plus 101, right? But how many times do you get that? You get that 100 times. So the answer is equal to 100 times 101. But because you added each number twice, you double count it. So you divide by 2. So I think that's 50-50, uh, 5,050. Uh, that's how you can add the first 100 numbers. And that would be a proof uh, that the sum of the first 100 numbers is 50-50. Or the first n numbers is n times n plus 1 over 2. But we, the reason we're doing this problem this way is because we'll do it by induction. right? Um, here's how the induction uh, step works. Let's just suppose uh, that this is true, and we'll do it for n greater than or equal to 1. right? Now, you always have to look at the base case and decide, well, did the problem say greater than or equal to 5? Did it say, because sometimes that's, it's, a thing is only true for greater than or equal to 5, greater than or equal to 17, greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 1. This one I claim is true only for greater than or equal to 1, right? Uh, let's, we you write the proof. In the same way that a proof by contradiction has a certain syntax, you say, assume to the contrary, blah, 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 contradiction. A proof by induction also has to have the same syntax. It's a similar structure. You have to say that you're doing induction. So you say, we proceed. By induction, the principle of mathematical induction. Later, we'll talk about other kinds of induction, and you'll have to specify which induction you're doing. Um, right, so base case. You may need even multiple base cases sometimes. Here, we only need one. Case, uh, base case, uh, is that n is equal to 1. So the left-hand side is just equal to 1. The right-hand side is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, which is equal to 1. So the base case is proven, because 1 is equal to 1. Right? RHS, I'm using a shorthand for the left-hand side. RHS is for the right-hand side. Right? LHS, left-hand side. Uh, assume induction step. Your induction hypothesis is assume for some uh, k that um, 1 plus 2 plus dot, 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 plus k is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. This is your induction hypothesis. This is what it's called. This is called the induction hypothesis. It's this part here where you assume 5k to be true. Now, it's not for every k. It's for some k, right? Uh, then what do you do here? Uh, we show that the sum of 1 plus 2 plus, plus k plus 1 is going to be equal to what? k plus 1 times k plus 2. Right. We, will, we want to prove that. We'll prove that. Consider the sum of i equals 1 to k plus 1 of i, right? This is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to k plus 1, right? But this is equal to the sum 
of i equals 1 to k of i plus k plus 1. Right? Let's peel off one term of that. Um, by the induction hypothesis, this is equal to what? Notice. Yes, notice this part is by the induction hypothesis, we may assume that that is just k times k plus 1 over 2 plus k plus 1. Do we see what, what, just, what just happened? I used the sum from 1 to k plus 1, and I want to try to show that's equal to this. But I took it, I broke it down, and I was able to use the induction hypothesis in it to transform it into this. That's the click of every induction proof. You're going to have to do that somehow, some way, in every single induction proof. Okay. Now from here, we want to show that this is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2. So I'm simply going to do some algebra. This is going to be equal to k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1 over 2, right? And from there, I'm going to factor out a k plus 1. And I'm going to get k plus 2 over 2, which is what we want. Sorry. Right. Maybe you end your proof with a little line. Um, by induction, we see for all n greater than or equal to 1 that the sum of the first uh, n numbers is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Right. Hopefully, you have lots of questions about this proof. Important here, especially, is, is sometimes not just the creativity in the proof, uh, but the syntax, the way to write it up. The words that I'm saying out loud, of course, most of them should be written down when you turn in such an assignment as well. Any questions? We're just going to do a million examples today. Uh, so we did the first, the sum of the first n numbers. What about the sum of the first n squares? So consider um, the sum of i equals 1 to n of i squared. And this is equal to 1 plus 2 squared plus 3 squared squared plus, plus uh, n squared. This is equal to, does anyone know that what this is equal to? I don't think you should know this one. You may. And two n plus one times two n plus one divided by. Man, how'd you get that? N times n plus one times two n plus one divided by, divided by six. You memorized that. You knew that from somewhere. How'd you know it? Uh, yeah, I some I I met this uh, equation, so I, I just memorized it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's the hardest one to memorize. In fact, one can derive the other. Uh, sort of, right? Maybe you've seen this. Um, how are we going to prove this? You could, of course, make a complicated argument as well about the sum of squares, because each number is a perfect square, so maybe there's some cool way they fit together. But uh, let's just do induction, because sometimes a problem is begging for induction. A lot of times, if you don't know how to do something and you want to show a universally quantified statement, induction is a really powerful tool, because the proof technique is really simple, actually. Prove it for zero. Oh, that's easy. Prove that by assuming the induction hypothesis that the next step follows, that's usually easy because you get to assume the induction hypothesis. From there, you can conclude the answer. So it's usually easy, the easiest way to prove something instead of directly, a lot of times. OK, just checking on it. Uh, let's do, um, and I claim that this is uh, equal to this for n greater than or equal to 1, right? So we proceed by induction. Uh, base case, uh, n is equal to 1. Uh, the left-hand side is equal to 1 squared, which is equal to 1. The right-hand side is going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 over 6, which is 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. Excuse me, which is equal to 1. 6 over 6, which is equal to 1, right? So the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. So we see that it holds for n equals 1. Now, by the way, if you do induction and you don't have a base case, the whole proof is wrong. 
it's not like a little, it's not a detail that's like can be ignored. The base case is essential for the truth. Because in fact, if something's false and you prove an induction step, everything could be false. You haven't proved anything to be true. You know, truth is inherited from the base case, right? Um, then we do uh, uh, our induction step that, um, what's our induction step? Suppose for some k that uh, the sum of i equals 1 to k of i squared is equal to k times uh, k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over uh, 6. We prove that uh, the sum of i squared from i equals 1 to k plus 1 is going to be equal to what? What do we want to prove? Yes. Now, why did we get 2k plus 3? We plugged in k plus 1 here. k as k plus 1. This is going to be 2 times k plus 1. So it's going to be 2k plus 2 plus 1, which is 2k plus 3. Right? You, know, you have to advance k by 1 for each one. So sometimes if it's a squared or something weird, you gotta you got to write it out. So we will proceed in an almost mechanical way as, as uh, previous. So we so, uh, consider uh, the sum of i is equal to 1 of i squared to the k plus 1 is equal. Let's peel off a term of the sum of i is equal to 1 to k of i squared plus k plus 1 squared. Now that is equal by the induction hypothesis. In you, when you use the induction hypothesis, you should loudly declare it. I'm not writing it on the board, but... I'm saying it really loudly. By the induction hypothesis, by the induction hypothesis, this is equal to k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1 over 6 plus k plus 1 squared. Right? From there, we will simply work out some terms. We're going to get k, uh, k plus 1. 2k plus 1 plus 6k plus 1 squared over 6. That is equal to, let's pull out a k plus 1. We're going to get uh, k plus 1 times k, uh, 2k plus 1 plus 6k plus 1, right? And what is that going to give us? That's going to give us, um, I'll just write the whole thing out. We're going to get uh, k plus 1 times uh, 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6 over, uh, over 6, which is going to be equal to k plus 1. Now let's... Uh, this can be foiled, right? So we have 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. We're going to get 2k and k here. And then what's going to go here? We get a 7k. So 1 is going to be 3. And 1 is going to be 2, right? Double check that. Make sure that's correct. Any mistakes? Yeah. 6. But that's just what we want, right, as desired. Uh, by induction, we see for all n greater than or equal to 1 that uh, the sum of i equals 1 to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Um, two quick details I want to point out. I'm using n and k separately, and you have to make sure that perhaps to not fall into an error, you can, an error, you can also use n and k in this way. n I'm using is the for all n, right, here. 
especially. The for all n part is the n. But when I'm doing the induction step, I'm using the letter k. But I'm not assuming that it's true for every k. That's really important. I'm not assuming this to be true for every k. I'm supposing that there is some k. Then that some k implies k plus 1. That's, the, uh, that's important there. If I were to assume for all k, well, then k, that's just for all n already, right? So I've assumed the premise in the proof, and I don't want to do that. It's true for just one k, perhaps. Just call it k. Because it's quantified over for all k, though, it's just a specific k. It's just a gen the letter k, a general k. And then that implies k plus 1. Slight uh, detail there. A second thing is that sometimes proofs have like an explanatory power, and they can tell you why a formula is what it is. Induction is not really such a technique, if you think about it. Induction, a, a proof asserts to you like that something is true, like you believe it to be true. Uh, you're like, after you see your proof, you'll be like, yeah, okay, that's right. right. But it doesn't tell you how we got the formula. It doesn't tell you, like, explain why the formula is the way it is. But certainly, it can convince you something is true. Right? That will be both a good and a bad thing, as we see in the future. More questions on this? Yes? Can you explain, like, left-hand side, of, like, what's the point of finding left-hand side? You need to show that it's true for uh, a base case. So I'm simply plugging in n equals 1 into the statement and verifying that it's true. Now, I'm just writing that as left-hand side, right-hand side, because I don't want to plug 1 into both sides. And then it's a little too, it's boring. It's like, like suppose I were not just to write left-hand side, right-hand side. I was supposed to say, well, let's just plug in n equals 1. So then we get 1 squared is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2n, two, two, 2 times 1 plus 1, which is equal over 6, which is equal to 1, right? And I'm like, well, 1 does equal 1, so it's true. That's a little uh, cartoonish. So I write left-hand side this, right-hand side this. You just need to verify the base case. It doesn't need to be left-hand side, right-hand side. All right, you guys probably can guess what the next thing we're going to prove is. What is it? Yeah, the sum of the first n cubes. If I did something 1 for case n equals, for case 1, I did something for case 2, almost inductively, you should be thinking I'm going to prove it for case 3, right? I'll leave this induction uh, statement up there. But this one should surprise you. The sum of the first uh, i cubes, so i is equal to 1 to n of i cubed, is going to be equal, excuse me, I, I cubed, is going to be equal to the sum of the first I s squares, no, excuse me, sum of the first I numbers, I equals 1 to n, squared. The sum of the first n cubes is equal to the sum of the first n numbers squared. Kind of a surprising, interesting fact. There isn't some science or something that tells you when that is true or why that is true, but it is true, right? What is this, by the way? Yeah, so this is really uh, n, n plus 1 over 2 squared, right? So how do we prove it? We'll just prove it by induction. Uh, we proceed by induction. Double check. I'm getting paranoid now. Uh, we proceed by induction. And of course, I mean, I have to say this is true uh, for n greater than or equal to 1. When we give you problems on the homework or on the exam, of course, everything is going to be specified. I'm just being lazy. We proceed by induction. Base case is that n is equal to 1. So the left-hand side is equal to 1 cubed. The right-hand side is equal to... 1 squared, which is equal to 1. Done. Right? 1 equals 1. Suppose uh, induction step is going to look like this. Your induction hypothesis, suppose for some k, uh, that um, the sum of the first uh, I equals 1 to k of i cubed is equal to the sum of i equals 1 to k of i squared. 
we prove uh, we prove that the sum of the first i cubes, excuse me, the first of the k plus one cubes, i is equal to one to k, is equal to the sum of the first i uh, i is equal to one to k plus one uh, squared. Right. So consider the summation then. Consider consider uh, the sum of i is equal to one to k plus one of i cubed. This is going to be equal to the sum of i is equal to 1 to k of i cubed plus k plus 1 cubed, right? Which is uh, equal uh, by the induction hypothesis to, uh, let's do k, uh, k plus 1 over 2 squared plus k plus 1 cubed. We agree? Questions on this step? Again, every proof by induction, the hit, the most important, the climax part, is when you apply the induction hypothesis. You say, by the induction hypothesis, like you're casting a spell, by the induction hypothesis, this is equal to this. Right? And that's only equal to this because of your assumption of the induction hypothesis. Right? Uh, now we're simply going to work this out. We have k squared, k plus 1 squared, uh, plus 2 k plus 1 cubed over 2. Now, that could be challenging to figure out, but I'm going to just pull out the k plus 1 squared. Sometimes, you, when you're given something like this, you don't want to foil everything out and then try to do the factoring. And Oh, my god. So you're just going to try and keep terms where they are, of course. right? So we're going to do, this is just k plus 1 squared times k times, uh, excuse me, times k squared plus 2 times k plus 1, right? All over uh, 2. Now, let's work that out some more. We're going to get uh, k plus 1 squared, k squared plus 2k plus 2, all over uh, 2, which is equal to... Second, I gotta work this math out. I think I messed up. There's a mistake, right? This is supposed to be a four. Correct, correct. This is a two squared. Yes, 2 squared. All right. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Good? All right. Uh, what is k squared plus 4k plus 4? Right? Uh, well, that's equal then. Let's, everything is a power, everything is a square. So let's just bring out the square. We get k plus 1, k plus 2, over 2, squared, which is just equal, then, to the sum of what? i is equal to 1 to k plus 1 of i, as desired, right? So, for all n greater than or equal to 1, by induction, we see that uh, the sum of the first i cubes, i equals 1 i cubed to n, is equal to the sum of the first i numbers, equals 1 of i to n squared. Right. Kind of an interesting thing. Induction, I think, historically was actually developed to try and prove this. People back in the day, they were counting sticks and rocks all the time. They didn't have anything else better to do. And they would just write out a few terms and try and combine things in certain ways. And they notice this pattern. And although this was kind of known 
like for several thousand years, only in like 1100 did someone figure out a way to prove it kind of by induction. Not really, but kind of, you know. They, uh, primitive induction was done that way, right? Questions on this proof by induction? Okay, we've seen it to be true for summations of things, but there's many other things we can do by induction, right? We'll do several other diverse examples today. We prove that 2 to the n is greater than n for all n, uh, which is a natural number. Now, that should be obvious, but we can prove it by induction. Uh, we proceed by induction. Uh, what's our base case? Hmm? N equals 0. Yes. So... Uh, left hand side is 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. Right hand side is 0. So we see that 1 is greater than 0. Okay? It's proven for the base case. Uh, assume uh, the induction step. Suppose that 2 to the k is greater than k uh, for some k. We prove 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1, right? So consider 2 to the k plus 1. That's equal to 2 times 2 to the k, right? By the induction hypothesis, what is this greater than? Two, k. 2 times k. I'm going to put these in parentheses so you can see. By the induction hypothesis, we know 2 to the k is greater than k, exactly for when it's 2 to the k, right? Not for like 2 to the 3 or something else. 2 to the k is greater than k. But 2 to the k is then equal to k plus k, right? k plus k is greater than equal greater than k plus 1. Right? Because we know k is greater than or equal to 1 by induction step. So we see that 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1, as desired. By induction, we have proved that uh, for all n, uh, and as a natural, 2 to the n is greater than n, QED, right? Now, is this, like, the best application of induction? Not really. Like, this is not a problem I would have approached first by induction. I would have tried, like, log rules or something, right? Calculus, contradiction, I don't know. Uh, there's so many other things to do first, but it's just a demonstration of the kind of power induction has. Again, the click, the part where you do the induction hypothesis, is you actually use the induction hypothesis somewhere in the construction, recursively. So, right. Questions on this? Yes? Uh, final inequality there, where k plus k is greater than k plus 1. Mm -hmm. What about when k is equal to 1? You've got me. It still holds, though. Questions on this one? Excellent. Let's do another one. All I have is a, a several rapid fire examples today from many different uh, domains.
Uh, we prove that for all n, 3 divides 2 to the 2n minus 1. Okay. Again, what is the, what everyone recall the definition of divide. We say a divides b. Uh, if and only if there exists some c which is 0 or greater, such that ac is equal to b, right? We will prove that for even powers of 2 minus 1, they are a multiple of 3. Okay? Uh, base case is what? I didn't specify it too loudly, but let's see what, what you think the base case is. n equals 0. 3 divides uh, 2 to the 0 minus 1, which is, what is 2 to the 0? 1. Yeah, so we get 3 divides 0 is true. Every number technically divides into 0. Why is that true? Choose c to be 0. Right? b is 0, c is 0. No matter what a is, a will divide into 0. Right? Um, uh, induction step. Uh, suppose uh, that 3 divides into 2 to the 2k minus 1. That's our induction hypothesis. But I'm going to write out the induction hypothesis a little more before plugging, plugging it into our induction step. So we know that uh, there exists some c such that, uh, such that uh, 3c is equal to 2 to the 2k uh, minus 1. So uh, 2 to the 2k is equal to, is equal to 3c plus 1, right? Uh, we prove that 3 divides into 2 to the 2k plus 2 minus 1, right? Now, here again, we replaced k with k plus 1. But it, because it's multiplied by 2, it's going to be 2 times k plus 1, which is 2k plus 2, right? Um, we will just start writing it out. Consider uh, 2 to the 2k plus 2 minus 1. We will simply write this out and show that it has, contains 3 as a factor. This is equal to 2 squared times 2 to the 2k minus 1. Do you agree? But by the induction hypothesis, and you should always say that out loud, by the induction hypothesis, this is equal to 2 squared times what? Three c plus one uh, minus one, which is then equal to let's just work it out twelve c plus four minus one, which is equal to uh, three times four c plus one. Since uh, tw two to the two k plus two minus one can be written. as 3 uh, times a number, we see that 3 divides into 2 to the 2k plus 2 minus 1 as desired. So we proved uh, for all n greater than or equal to 0 that uh, 3 divides into 2 to the 2n minus 1. All right. Questions on that one? Again, kind of the, uh, I want to make another reference to the power of induction. Suppose I gave you that statement. Show that for all n. Three divides into it. Uh, what do I do? I don't really know. I don't, I don't have a first guess. Like, now I know, maturity-wise, like, I should try induction first. But if you didn't know the technique of induction, uh, you might not know where to start on that one. Suppose to the contrary, there's some k such that it doesn't divide into it. And then, well, I don't really know. Right? It's not obvious where to go from there. You work it out, things don't seem to fall nicely, right? Question on this proof. So we did a several summations uh, by induction. We did a um, uh, greater than problem by induction. We did a division problem by induction. What else can we do by induction? There's a few more problems we can do today. Any more questions on that one? OK. 
Okay. All right, I have two more problems. Well, three more uh, tiling problems to do. Um, Induction is not n just about the numbers, but it's a lot of, about recursion in general. So we're going to show you some induction that, at least on the surface, does not appear to be on the numbers. But it really is. So consider, we'll prove the following. Um, any uh, 2 to the n by 2 to the n board with 1 quarter missing can be tiled by tromino pieces, triominoes, like something looks like that, right? So you get this little Tetris L thing with three squares, and you have a two to the n, two to the n, by two to the n board with a quarter missing. So what we mean is it's a quarter like this, right? Right. The power of the board is a, the, the, the size of the board is a power of two, and I claim there's a way to tile the, the whole board with these L pieces. By tile, we mean cover every square of the board. And also, no square is covered twice, no square is uncovered, right? Sort of think of like a literal phys physical wooden device and you're like locking it in here, right? Any questions on the statement of the thing before we proceed? We prove that any 2 to the n by 2 to the n board will n is greater than or equal to 1, right? Uh, this is true. And we, in fact, can proceed by, proceed by induction, right? Questions on the statement before we do so. We proceed by induction. So we have a base case, n is equal to 1. Why is the base case true? It's just the same thing. Yeah. So we have a 2 to the 1 by 2 to the 1 board with a quarter missing. It's going to look like that. We can tile that with an L piece. OK, done. Base case, easy. Now, assume for some k that a 2 to the k times 2 to the k board with one quarter missing, that's the way I'm calling it, uh, can be tiled by pieces. We give a tiling by L pieces of a 2 to the k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus 1 uh, board with one quarter missing. So we're going to take a 2 to the k plus 1 by 2 to the k plus 1 board with a quarter missing and give a tiling of it. So suppose we have such a board. OK. We have a, it's, it's of height 2 to the k plus 1, again, a power of 2. It's a width 2 to the k plus 1, again, a power of 2. And we need to somehow figure out how to get the induction hypothesis in there. So what I'm going to say is we're going to break this 2 to the k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus 1 size board into a few pieces. The following pieces, in fact. That doesn't look very symmetrical, but you guys see what I did there. Uh, break it up into four, a uh, two to the k times two to the k with one quarter missing pieces, sections, we'll say. 
by the induction hypothesis, each of these can be tiled. So combine the four tilings to be a tiling of uh, 2 to the k plus 1 by 2 to the k plus 1 board with a quarter missing. Yes? Why is each of the four sections uh, 2 to the k by 2 to the k? Convince yourself that if the height is 2 to the k plus 1, this is exactly half. What is half of 2 to the k plus 1? 2 to the k uh, plus 1 over 2, right. which is 2 to the k. So this is 2 to the k. This is 2 to the k, right? And so on. Important is the power of 2 part. If it was like a board of 3 by 3, we, I don't think we could do it, you know? We need to be able to divide it. Another cool thing about the proof by induction is that it also gives you an answer. If you had a literal board of a certain size, you could use the proof by induction to reconstruct what the answer should be. So this would be, for example, 4 by 4, but we could do 8 by 8. Okay, I'm not the best at drawing straight lines, but you guys believe me what I'm doing, right? Okay, that would be the way, that would be the way to tile the 8 by 8 board, right? And so on. Recursively down, you could also get, it would give you the tiling of the 16 by 16 board, and so on. Right. Questions on this one? It's not obvious. Like the reduction, the the induction was not done over the number numbers, but it was done over um, the dimension of the board, which was the number, which was a number. But the induction happened. The induction hypothesis application happened inside with the tiling. Let's do two more quick examples. Um, uh, consider uh, two to the k, uh, excuse me, a two to the n by two to the n board with one piece missing, one one square missing. This can be tiled by uh, these L pieces. What we mean by this is this. So you have a two to the two to the n by two to the n board. A 2 to the n by 2 to the n board, one square is solid. I claim if it's a power of 2 with a single square missing, you can still perform the tiling. Right? Questions on the statement before we get to the proof by induction? And again, this is what? n greater than or equal to 1? Do we understand what's going on? That one square can be anywhere. That's the important detail. Um, we proceed by induction. Uh, base case is a uh, two by two board with a square missing. There's only four possible such boards. All of these can be tiled by a single piece. So base case is good, right? Suppose uh, every uh, two to the k by by uh, two to the k board uh, with one missing can be tiled. Consider any. 2 to the k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus 1 board with 1 missing, we give a tiling of such a board, OK? So 
split the board into quadrants. The one missing is exactly in one quadrant. Right? So you take the 2 to the k by 2 to the k plus 1, 2 to the k plus 1 by 2 to the k plus 1 board, divide it in half, and then divide it in half again. Whatever one square is missing is exactly and only in one quadrant. It's not in two quadrants at once, and it's not in no quadrants at once. Right? Take one uh, L piece and uh, put it in the middle facing the quadrant with one missing. What we're going to do is we're going to go here. Put the L piece like that. Right? This is a 2 to the k by 2 to the k board with a square missing. This is a 2 to the k by 2 to the k board with one missing. This is a 2 to the k by 2 to the k board with one missing. And this is a 2 to the k by 2 to the k board with one missing. By the induction hypothesis, tile these four uh, 2 to the k by 2 to the k boards with one missing and one additional tile in the middle. This is a tiling. QED. Do we see how the induction happened again? Right? Questions on this one? It took a little creativity to the way to break it up. Now, if we were to try to make the same recursive argument, this one would have to be split into quarters, and then in quarters again, and quarters again, and quarters again. It would recurse all the way down, right? So there's always a way to uh, do, perform such a tiling. Questions on this one? I think I have one more example. Yes, let's do just one more. And then the second half will be a little shorter. What is the interior angle sum of a triangle? What's the interior angle sum of any quadrilateral? 180? A square has 360? Yeah. Uh, for any convex n-gon, uh, n greater than or equal to 2, the interior angle sum is uh, n minus 2 times 180 degrees. Right. Why n can be equal to 2? Oh, 3. Because 2 minus 2 is 0. Let's not think about an, uh, a shape of zero area. That would be a line segment. A line segment would definitely have interior angle sum of zero, but let's suppose the angles are not defined. It technically works for that, but let's, try, let's start with a triangle. right? Um, what does convex mean? Do you guys know what the definition of convex means? It's different in different ge geometrical con contexts, but basically we can suppose that there's nothing like this. right? Convexity means pick two points inside the shape, then the path between those points must remain in the shape. So here and here, this is not convex, because you can go outside of the shape by going between two points in the shape. right? Every convex shape looks like this. They all look the same, essentially. There's no dimple inside. All the dimples are outside. It's all outies, no innies, right? 
there's more formal definitions of convexity, convex functions, convex analysis, but this is like in a geometrical sense what we mean. And you could think of that every, every angle does not have interior angle greater than 180 degrees, right? Uh, so base case, we proceed by induction. Sorry. We proceed by induction. Base case is n is equal to 3. The triangle does have interior angle sum of 180 degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees times three minus two, which is correct, right? Why does the triangle have interior angle sum one hundred and eighty degrees? You have to prove it in Euclidean geometry, but certainly you can assume it as fact, right? Um, uh, suppose every n gon has interior angle sum of one hundred and eighty degrees times n minus 2, right? Consider an n plus 1 gon, right? So we're considering an n plus 1 gon. So an n plus 1 gon has n plus 1 sides, right? And it's convex. Something like that, OK? This is n plus 1 sides. Uh, pick two points one apart. What we're going to do then is pick two points one apart and draw a straight line there, OK? Um, this forms a triangle and and what's the number of sides this piece has n. yes and an n gon the interior angle sum of the n gon n plus 1 gon excuse me of the n plus 1 gon oh there we go n plus 1 gon is the sum of the interior angles of the triangle and the n-gon. Why is that true? That is some angle of the n plus 1-gon, but it's just an angle of this triangle and of the n-gon, right? If you add the angle of the triangle with the angle of the n-gon, the new angle formed, that's just the angle of the n plus 1-gon, right? So the interior angle sum of uh, the n plus 1-gon is uh, the interior angle sum is, I'll say, I'll write it this way. By the induction hypothesis, the interior angle sum of the triangle of the n-gon, but the n-gon ha has interior angle sum of 180 degrees times n minus 2 plus the interior angle sum of the triangle, which is 180 degrees. But that's just simply equal to 180 degrees times n plus 1, n minus 1, excuse me, as desired. So um, for all n greater than or equal to uh, 3, the convex n-gon has interior angle sum of 180 degrees times n minus 2 QED, right? Again, I want to flex the power of proof. This doesn't address the question that what about different shapes of the same side? Let's say you have four. Consider all possible convex polygons, quadrilaterals, of four sides. Do you think they could have different interior angle sum? 
It doesn't even address that question, sort of. It sort of is superior to it. It it's, proves that every poly, convex polygon of n sides has the same interior angle sum of exactly 180 times n minus 2. Right. Any questions on this proof? Again, induction, a very powerful tool. You could also do this one without induction, it turns out. Well, there's a lot of things you could do without induction, but there's a lot more you can do with induction. Right. Questions? Excellent. 